Hi, how are you today? I hope you're doing well. Please review today's news segments, and then we'll get started. This is VOA News. I'm Marissa Melton. Former U.S. President Donald Trump is appearing in a New York court this hour for arraignment on more than 30 counts of alleged wrongdoing in the first indictment ever filed against a current or former U.S. leader. Trump's lawyers say he's pleading not guilty to charges linked to a $130,000 hush money payment to a porn star actress Stormy Daniels. The payment was allegedly made just ahead of his 2016 presidential election victory as a means to silence her about her claim of a one-night stand with him a decade earlier. Trump has long denied her claim, but not that his one-time lawyer and political fixer Michael Cohen made the payment to Daniels. Neither has he denied that reimbursement payments to Cohen Cohen were recorded as legal expenses on a business ledger for the Trump Organization. Addressing a boisterous crowd in New York City on Tuesday, Congresswoman Marjorie Taylor Greene said Trump is an innocent man. This is the former president of the United States of America. And the government has been weaponized against him. I'm here to protest and use my voice to take a stand. Every American should take a stand. That's Congresswoman Marjorie Taylor Greene speaking out in support of former President Donald Trump in New York City on Tuesday. Finland joined the NATO military alliance Tuesday, dealing a major blow to Russian President Vladimir Putin with a historic realignment of Europe's post-Cold War security landscape triggered by Moscow's invasion of Ukraine. The Nordic country's membership doubles Russia's border with the world's biggest security alliance. Finland had adopted neutrality after its defeat by the Soviet in World War II, but its leaders signaled they wanted to join NATO just months after Moscow's invasion of Ukraine sent a shiver of fear through its neighbors. This is VOA News. U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken on Tuesday hosted a virtual panel discussion featuring foreign ministers from around the world on the need for a just and lasting peace in Ukraine. VOA's Jeff Custer has more. Tuesday's panel is part of the second U.S.-led Summit for Democracy. President Joe Biden will formally kick off the summit Wednesday. For his part, the U.S. Secretary of State warned against agreeing to calls for a ceasefire before a real peace plan is on the table. Otherwise, he said it could just provide an opportunity for Russia to retool and attack again later. Addressing the panel from Kyiv, Ukraine's Foreign Minister Dmitry Kuleba said Ukraine's conditions for peace have been known since the beginning of the conflict. The Ukrainian people will accept peace only if it guarantees the cessation of Russian aggression in full, the complete withdrawal of Russian troops from Ukrainian territory, and the restoration of our state's territorial integrity within internationally recognized borders. Jeff Custer, VOA News, Washington. An elite Russian security officer who defected says Russian President Vladimir Putin is a war criminal. AP correspondent Charles de Ledesma. On October 14, Russian engineer Gleb Karakulov boarded a flight from Kazakhstan to Turkey with his wife and daughter. He switched off his phone to shut out the crescendo of urgent enraged messages and said goodbye to his life in Russia. But this was no ordinary Russian defector. Karakulov? was an officer in President Vladimir Putin's secretive elite personal security service, one of the few Russians to flee and go public who have rank, as well as knowledge of intimate details of Putin's life and potentially classified information. Karakulov says he hopes to inspire other Russians to speak out. Our president has become a war criminal, he says. It is time to end this war and stop being silent. Charles Diladesma, London. Pakistan's Supreme Court ordered Tuesday that snap elections in two provinces must be held on May 14th, declaring that a delay of the votes by a government-backed election commission was unlawful. The verdict handed a political victory to former Prime Minister Imran Khan, who's been pushing for early national elections since he was ousted from power by a parliamentary no-confidence vote a year ago. Somalia and Cuba have agreed to resume diplomatic relations after 46 years, this according to Somalia's Minister of Foreign Affairs. Abshir Omar Jama confirmed the diplomatic rapprochement in a Twitter post 
on Monday. Having established diplomatic relations between 1972 and 1977, it said we welcome the resumption of diplomatic relations with the Republic of Cuba, governed by cooperation and mutual respect. That's the text of his Twitter post from Monday. Cuba's ambassador to Somalia was one of three ambassadors who submitted credentials to Somalia's president on Tuesday. From Washington, I'm Marissa Melton, VOA News.
Thank you for watching. Can you do me a favor? Please leave a comment in the comment section below. That would really help. Thank you and see you again soon.